Thanks for having me. Growing up, I was always different. Um, I just felt that I was different. Maybe it's because the color of my hair. I really didn't have that many friends. So I tried to make an impact on people's lives so they can eventually be my friend and we can hang out and everything like that. So I said, I need to come up with something. I don't know what it is. Maybe let me start fighting. Let me, let me get something that's going to get people attention. Clearly that wasn't working because I was getting suspended a lot and my mom was not happy about that. Uh, so I needed to find another outlet. My senior year of high school, I was going through a phase. And I'm not sure what this phase was. I just thought maybe it was me going through puberty or what it was. I just wasn't sure. It wasn't clicking. I was like, from my background, there's no way that somebody like me could be gay. No way. So I played with Michael Kidd, Gil Chris, Kyrie Irving, uh, who are great players, and they're in the NBA right now, and real close friends of mine. And I never told them that I was gay. But that whole senior year, I used to look at guys and girls, which was a little awkward at that time. But um, I guess it was something that I was going through. My freshman year is when the phase started to pick up a little bit. Western Kentucky University. I was the top recruit. I was the big man on campus. A lot of girls liked me, uh, <laughs> but only if they knew what my sexual orientation was. So I said, let me, let me try to experiment. Let me try to see if this is what I really am. So I got on the apps, the grinders, the, the Adam for Adam, all those gay apps. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, um, let me just meet somebody and see if I like it. At first I was real precautious because I used to watch MSNBC Predator and I didn't want to be involved with that. So, <laughs> so I was a little hesitant at first. Uh, but I, I went for it, and um, after the experience, I was like, there's no way I'm gay. There's just no possible way. I didn't like it. Um, it just felt that it wasn't me. So I said, before my teammates find out, let me find the hottest girl on campus, which, in luck, it came true, and it happened. She was a cheerleader on the basketball team, and everybody wanted her, and I was with her. So it worked out perfect for me. We went out on dates, we did the whole thing, candlelit dinners, the whole nine. I'm, I'm, I feel really bad the way I treated her because I was basically using her so people won't find out my sexual orientation. So, transfer to University of Massachusetts. Uh, <laughs> and that's where my whole life changed. A picture went up on Instagram, uh, me and my ex. Um, my teammates found out about the picture. Um, they caught me when I was out at, the, at a club, a gay club in New Jersey called um, Club Paradise down by the shore. And I was out dancing, I like to dance a lot, so I'm out dancing. And um, they give me a call and they asked me, where am I at? Now I don't drink, so I don't know what kind of frame of mind I was in. I was supposed to lie, but I didn't. I was like, oh, I'm at a club. What club you at? Club Paradise. Soon as I said that, they hung up. I stopped dancing, which I was mad because it was my favorite song playing. <laughs> and I left. I went home and I went to sleep. The next day I went to school. The whole time I'm going back to school, I'm shaking. Four hour, drive back, four hour ride back on the Peter Pan bus, just shaking the whole time because they found out. Not everybody, but four or five of my teammates. So the whole time I come back to school, I'm getting picked on for that four weeks, name calling, teasing. I didn't have nobody to go to. Not one person on the basketball team was going to talk to me about it. I didn't really have nobody, really an outlet. It just felt like, honestly, I was just, I was in a cage and people was just sticking me with needles and I couldn't get out the cage. I couldn't move or anything like that. My twin brother, uh, who's incarcerated right now, I was going to tell him about the situation. He was actually going to be the first person I was going to come out to. So I couldn't tell him. 
my older brother Mike, um, somebody who I'm very close with as well. I couldn't tell him as well because I didn't know how he was going to react. I couldn't tell my father because my dad, he's just knowing him, he, I'm not really sure how he was going to react to it. And a real special lady who brought me into this world, I couldn't tell her, was my mother. And I talked to my mom just about four or five times a day. And I couldn't tell her that I was getting picked on or teased or nothing like that. And every day I talked to her on the phone, I wanted to cry to her on the phone, but I couldn't. And she always asked me how things is going up at school, how are things going, is everything fine? And I'm sitting there lying to her on the phone. I'm telling her everything is great, but she don't know that I have to cry myself to sleep every night. She don't know that I have to cry myself to sleep every night because I really didn't. <laughs> I cried myself to sleep every night because she didn't really, she didn't know, like, and I didn't have nobody else to go to. So I said something needs to change because if nothing didn't change, I was going to quit basketball. I was going to stop playing the sport. I've been playing my whole life since I, since I was a little kid. So I said, all right, I need to find some courage. I need to talk to somebody or get some help. Um, so a good friend of mine is Wade Davis, who works where you can play. I'm real good friends of his, and um, I said something needs to happen because if some don't, I'm quitting basketball. I'm not playing no more because I feel that maybe if I quit basketball, maybe nobody won't pick on me no more. Maybe I won't get teased or anything like that. And he said, no, nah, don't do that. We're going to find out a situation that's going to help you. So I was, a weekend came, I was going to tell my parents that Sunday. I went to Philly for Friday and Saturday. I was single, so I was back on the market, so I needed to have some fun in Gaberhood. That's what we call Philly. Um, so I went there Friday and Saturday, and Sunday came, I had to come home. I'm shaking the whole time down, because it's honestly probably one of the scariest, most nervous things I ever had to do was to tell my parents. and. Ever since I told him, I came to realize and I understand why a lot of people don't come out because you don't want to have to tell your parents that you're gay because once you tell them that you're gay, then they know what you're doing when you, every time you go out and everything like that. So I get home and I'm sitting on the couch with my mom. We watching a NCAA tournament Kentucky's playing. My mom is downstairs and my father's upstairs. So I said, Mom, I think you need to tell um, Daddy to come downstairs so we can talk about something. So he come downstairs, and I'm still shaking the whole time. I don't, I don't know what to do. So I said, Mom, you know what? Just start guessing. Maybe if you guess the right thing, maybe I, 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 I agree to it. <laughs> so, uh, so she said, are you leaving school? I said, no. She said, are you quitting basketball? I said, no. She said, are you modeling? I said, no. She <laughs> said, she, she, then she said, did you get somebody pregnant? I said, that's way off base. That is way, way off base. <laughs> um, so, of course, she said, um, she said, are you gay? And I hopped on it real quick. And she froze. And when she froze, she... Was going, she was going to start crying because I could just tell by the look on her face and everything like that. And I told her, don't cry because if my mom start crying, I'm going to start crying. And she was like, no, I wasn't going to cry because I don't want you to be gay. I was going to cry because you finally opened up and you're four years of hiding and you're finally able to tell me that. When she told me that, so much weight was lifted off my shoulders. I was able to be comfortable with myself. My father, on the other hand, he took it the hardest. Um, I didn't really talk to him that much that day. But the next day, the following day, I had to go back to school. And we had about a half an hour to an hour conversation. He said he's going to love me and support me no matter what. 
I'm still his son. He, he's not going to treat me no different. And that's honestly something that I needed going back to school. My head coach, I told him the next day, uh, Coach Kellogg, and he honestly handled it better than and I honestly didn't know he was going to handle it that way. He, was, he said that he's still going to support me no matter what. He's still going to love me. I'm going to still be the same pit bull person on the court. Everything's going to stay the same. I said, all right, Wednesday, got to tell my teammates. My teammates who've been picking on me that whole summer. So I'm going into it like, I don't, I'm not sure if I want to do it because I don't know how they're going to respond. And if they respond, a, a negative way, I don't know how I'm going to react. So I tell them, come to find out, everybody on the team knew, plus the coaches, which, <laughs> which was very surprising, but it came to show that they found out, but they didn't tell me, but they didn't treat me no different. And I didn't even notice that. They, they still was treating me the same. Nothing changed. They still loved me. They, like, I didn't even notice. So when we went in, my coach said, all right, we're gonna, I'm going to tell them that I'm gay. Maybe that's going to stir things up a little bit. <laughs> so, so, he, <laughs> so he, um, he went in there. He told them. He told them. He was like, all right, um, fellas, I just want to tell you all that I'm gay. Everybody had a shocking look on their face. As <laughs> soon as I said it, everybody sat down. Like every, every, nobody was surprised at all. But when I told them, it, honestly, it still wasn't enough. Even though I told my teammates, my coaches, and my family, I felt that it's just not there yet. I need to go to the next level. So I, I called Wade, and uh, I told him, I said, all right, I told everybody within a span of four days, we need to go meet, we need to go public with this. So I did my ESPN interview with Kate Fagan, and I did another interview with Sig Ziglar from Outsports.com, and both of those interviews came out perfect. And honestly, um, I didn't know what to expect coming out in this state, so I had to do some research to find out if this state is very comfortable with gays. So uh, <laughs> it worked. It worked out. <laughs> so it, it, it worked out perfect. Um, Massachusetts is a very welcome gay state, so I decided to come out. When I came out. I didn't know how everybody was going to react. I didn't know how people was going to handle it. But honestly, um, it, it took me to, honestly, my whole life has changed for the better. Um, I got a chance to meet, uh, who's actually I'm very, very good friends with now, Anderson Cooper. Um, I'm, Tyra Banks tweeted at me, who, <laughs> that, that was honestly one the, very surprising. She follows me now, so I can direct message her. <laughs> Um, and she just said she's going to love me and support me no matter what, and uh, she's happy for me. And just the things that came my way, I got invited to the GLAAD Awards, which is like the, the gay Oscars. So, <laughs> so I get to walk the red carpet. I get to do things that a normal 22-year-old don't do. So my whole life has just changed for the better. And honestly, if I would have known this way before, I would have came out as soon as I came out my mom's stomach. As soon, like as soon as I came out, I would have came out. And that's just because I'm just so happy right now. And my life has took me to so many places that I never would have thought. And honestly, right now, I just want to be able to help anybody, not just at University of Massachusetts, but anybody across the world, because it's been people from Israel, France, and China that reached out to me, telling me their situation and their story, and they want to want my input on how they should handle it as far as to their parents or their teammates or coaches. And I'm just the type, since I'm a leader on the court, why not be a leader off the court? I'm the first openly gay Division One player in the world, which if somebody had to start it, I wanted it to be me. Uh, so. Um, so yeah, my, my whole life has uh, been great so far, and I just, like, not just y'all, but if anybody need to talk to me about anything, they can Facebook me, Twitter me, email me, whatever, I'm willing to answer to, it's, it's probably going to be hard to answer to everybody, but I'm going to do my best to try to answer 
everybody just because I know how it is to sit there and have to tell your parents, and that's not an easy thing to do. So my, my last thought to y'all is just stay true to yourselves, be yourselves, be true. Thanks for having me, and I love y'all. Appreciate it. <laughs>